I once thought the profound and deep things of existence were available only to special people. I now grasp that my life is full of mystery. I now grasp that life is a deep place. The contemporary contemplative is one who consciously practices swimming in the deep waters of her own real life. The contemporary contemplative mindfully experiences her own experience. The contemporary contemplative practices the ultimate encounter. To that solitary individual, Real contemplatives will always be rare and few. I would not wish at any price to give up my sufferings. It often happens that those who spend their time giving light to others remain in darkness themselves. From the beginning of recorded history, all depth-seeking traditions have found their origin in the personal life experience of a solitary individual who opened themselves to the ultimate encounter. This path to depth remains today. Truth has not changed. The ultimate encounter has not changed. All that ever changes is the metaphor by which we communicate this changeless reality. Yet we live in a special moment. A new millennium is dawning. The old metaphors do not work so well in provoking a contemporary practice of the ultimate encounter. Within the profound history of humanity, the gateway to our contemporary shared global depth opened in November 1968, when in Dharamsala, India, the 14th Dalai Lama and Thomas Merton met and encountered in one another a shared consciousness and common path into the new world. In this meeting, they shared an ultimate encounter that would define the legacy of each. In that encounter, the contemplative traditions of the East and West met and began the exploration of a common origin and depth. This journey continues today. It is this journey we are invited to share. In our decision to explore or not explore this journey, the future of humanity and this planet rests. The hour has come for humanity to embrace the truth of a mystery-centered reality. Although attempting to bring about world peace through the internal transformation of individuals is difficult, it is the only way. Now you may not have heard of the most important thing happening in the world today, but the most important thing happening in the world today is that humanity is looking for a new story, a new myth, a new metaphor. You're about to get on your bicycles and ride to a place called Ground Zero. And it was um, on that place on September 11th, 2001, that many of us became aware for the first time of what I would talk about as myth wars. Now myth war goes something like this. <clears throat> I see you and I see that you and I are sharing this space, sharing this planet. I acknowledge you and, and I see that we have some things in common. In fact, I, I sort of like you. In fact, I think we could, we could maybe even get to be friends. We, um, 
we seem to have some common challenges, but maybe we can work together and help each other. I, I can see some ways we might do that. I, you know, we, we share the same planet, share the same biology, drink the same water, breathe the same air, but you have a different story than I do. You have a different metaphor to help provide guidance and meaning to your life. You have a different myth. And therefore, I have to kill you. Now you may say, what kind of way is that to run a planet? But our species has been doing that for the last several thousand years. And humanity is now looking for a new metaphor, a new story to get into the future because the world keeps getting smaller and we keep getting more interconnected. And there are many folks today who believe that the old story and the old myth and the old way of running this planet isn't going to be so healthy for the future. Now my generation didn't quite get the job done. Your parents' generation didn't get it done either. And here you are. And now it's your turn. So like it or not, you're on the front lines. You're on the edge of evolving the new story. The age of nations is past. The task before us now, if we would not perish, is to shake off our ancient prejudices and to build the earth. The more I look at the world, the less I see any other possible result apart from its active and conscious unity. Your silence is needed today. Your voice is needed today. Your story is needed today. Your journey is needed today. Your presence is needed today. Practice the ultimate encounter and change the world today. Transform the world from the inside out one solitary individual at a time. I am today the truth I seek. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the one will, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Why take this journey? Why nurture the ultimate encounter? Why not flee this encounter, as most of humanity has done for most of history? Why not listen only to those voices urging me to focus on material acquisition and the currency of power and security in this world? Why not focus only on the sensual and that which feels good? Why not listen to those who urge me to deny the unknowable and the invisible and focus only on the rational, only on the intellectual, only on that which makes sense to the narrow and controlling human mind? Why not focus only on friends and family and my community and the society of other human beings? Why venture out in a solitary pursuit of an encounter with the awe-filling ultimate other. Why not just play it safe? Why take this journey? Nobody is born a warrior in exactly the same way that nobody is born an average person. We make ourselves into one or the other. The average person is hooked to other people, while the warrior is hooked only to infinity. A warrior knows that she is waiting, and she knows what she is waiting for, 
and while she waits, she feasts her eyes upon the world. A warrior's ultimate accomplishment is to enjoy the joy of infinity. I think where I actually experience my mind and my brain being stretched beyond what either I'm capable of, of understanding. Whenever uh, we, I read anything about physics or astronomy, uh, it just, it, it really is mind-blowing and concepts about time and relativity and even the gravitational web of the universe and uh, and the vastness, the unfathomable vastness and mystery of the the cosmos, the world, and like the universe, and how how it all fits together and just connects, and just how it works so well, and then just how it's created and how we are created. It's mind blowing. It really is. It's just because you just can't explain it. I mean, it's just like I don't I don't even know how, what to say. It's just. You're like lost for words. I always, I'm always thinking about things that are just kind of crazy or that I'm just like, hey, do other people think about this kind of thing? Oh, you know, the Big Bang Theory, how, how everything was started through that. But then I started thinking about that, I'm like, that still doesn't even really answer the question. And it just, it was, I, I pretty much sat up that entire and I just thinking about it and it just blew my mind. It, it's, I just remember that as being the first time that really hit me. It also, it started a very long period of time where I was very like, oh gosh. I, I can't I can't fathom anything. The main places where I have been stretched are in relationships with people and in the the confounding and frustrating desire that I have to really be intimately connected with people. The, I find relationships to be highly absurd at some times. Um, yeah, just just balancing the the knowing that I have that we're all connected and the experience that I have of this separation and confusion and frustration and fear and it can be really overwhelming sometimes. You sit with another person and answer big life questions and one of the questions was who are you? It just like your mind can't comprehend it sometimes like it's just something that you just have to sit back and experience and even if it doesn't make sense you just kind of have to accept it. So sometimes you have to put aside your thoughts and put aside what might seem right or what might seem crazy because it's actually true. I remember a time when I felt that it was almost as if um, something outside of myself would come in and just take over my brain and it was like there was me and there was this other thing. I have the experience all the time of being aware of paradox of things that, you know, there's two things that seem to both be true at the same time, but they can't possibly be, but they are. I love stuff that's paradoxical. I have this response too where I go nonverbal sometimes. Stuff will, people ask me a question and it's just like, there is no way to phrase that in English, but I am aware of what it is. I have edgy thoughts all the time. I've always had this knowing that there was something way bigger than me and my parents and my neighborhood. I've always known that, but I had never talked about it because somehow I felt that it wouldn't be received. In my depth, in the silence, I sense this encounter holds my path to the most special of journeys, a journey home, a journey to my essential reality. I sense it is this journey that nurtures an authentic connection with others and myself. It is this journey that allows me to live effectively in this world as I also become a friend and lover of the other world. It is this journey alone that feeds and gives perspective on all other human endeavors, political, cultural, social, economic, educational, and environmental. It is this deep well from which the children of humanity for all time drink. 
It is to the practice of the ultimate encounter we, the children of the new millennium, are being invited. We each have an infinite passion that will not rest until it finds an infinite object. If you hunger and thirst for depth in our time, join me on this journey. Help write the new story on the hearts of the children of the new millennium. The ultimate reality is waiting. I am coming home. Come with me. I have arrived. I am home. In the here. In the now. I am solid. I am free. In the ultimate I dwell. In the ultimate I dwell.